everyone, welcome to my last update for my hashtag 365 days of samples for 2017. I am bringing this project back once more for the second year in a row. I will be doing this through 2018 as well, but it's getting to be the end of the year, so it's just time to wrap everything up. So I will be talking about all of these remaining products. I will not be choosing any more. And then next week, or the week after, I will do a little recap where I will talk about the products that I ended up purchasing over the last year because of this project. And there were a few things, so I do have quite a bit to talk about. But anyway, let's talk about the products that I was working on for the last couple of weeks. I always talk about the products that I would not purchase the full size of first. And the first thing I want to talk about is from Josie Marin. This is the Argan Enlightenment Illuminizer. So I mixed this with foundation to get like a luminous glowy skin thing. I used the last little bit of it today mixed with my foundation, which was the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation. And I really liked it. It mixed really well together. It wasn't like it separated and it was kind of awkward to mix. It wasn't too dark. Um, the reason why I wouldn't purchase it though is because I've tried other liquid highlighters, liquid illuminators that I prefer. And the more I try other things, the more I realize how much I like the other ones. Uh, there's one from Burberry that I really, really like that just seemed to work the best for me with mixing with foundations and even wearing on its own. So just in comparison, this one wasn't quite as good, but I do generally like Josie Man products, so it wasn't bad, it just didn't compare to the Burberry one that I tried previously. The next product I have is from Fresh. This is a lip balm. It's the Sugar Nourishing Lip Balm Advanced Therapy. So it's a little bit of a different version than the standard Fresh Sugar Lip Balms, which I really love. This one made my lips tingle a little bit and I just didn't enjoy it. I really like just the classic standard lip balm from Fresh. If I somehow lost all of my lip balms, I would then end up purchasing two from Fresh. I would purchase the clear one, the regular Fresh Sugar lip balm, lip treatment I think they call it, and the rose one. Those are the only two I think I would need and I'm kind of working towards that. That's basically my goal. I just want to have those lip balms because they work really well for me. They're very, very hydrating. I love them. I love everything about it. So this one is just advanced lip balm, advanced lip therapy. I don't need that. It's very, very hydrating, moisturizing, but I don't need it and I don't like the tingling action on my lips. So why fix what ain't broke? If, it's, if the other one's working for me, I might as well just stick with that one. I also would not purchase the full size of the Diva Curl Melt Into Moisture Matcha Butter Conditioning Mask. I really, really wanted to like this, but I just didn't end up loving it enough. Once I finished it, I didn't think about it again. I didn't miss it. So it worked well. It definitely felt hydrating on my hair. The last time I used it, I just used it for a short period of time. I didn't leave it on my hair for that long, about 10 minutes or so. It really did seem to hydrate my hair. My hair felt good. Um, but just that final that final key factor for me is do I miss it afterwards? Now, I might think about it later if I'm trying other hair masks. I might think, oh, you know that Diva Curl one? I miss what that did. Because sometimes you have to try those products that aren't so good to really know what does work. I need something to compare it to. And there just really wasn't anything I could compare this mask to. I've used plenty of hair masks before um, and none of them have really stood out to me and been things that I've repurchased a lot. I have a few like conditioning treatments and, and leave-in things that I've repurchased, but not, not hair masks. So may I just need to try some more. I might end up coming back for it, but for now it just wasn't memorable enough for me to want to purchase. And the last thing that I would not purchase the full size of is this moisturizer. This is from Neutrogena. It's the Hydro Boost Gel Cream. So it was fine, but it's a gel and my skin just doesn't do anything with gel products. It's just like, what is, what are you doing? This is a waste of my time. Give me something more. Especially in the winter time, my skin needs more moisture and a gel is a joke. My skin is just basically laughing at it. It's not doing anything. So it felt really good on the skin, really cooling and refreshing. So I do think I would like it in the summertime. Um, it might be lightweight enough and I might need less hydration that it would be okay. But for right now, no, it just did not hydrate my skin enough. I really need the moisture, just like with my hair. 
Moving on now to products that I would purchase the full size of, the first thing I have here is from Dr. Brandt. This is the Needles No More 3D Volumizing Mask. This stuff is so freaking good. I used this before last year in, during this project and I really loved it and then I had to track down more samples of it because it's so expensive. This is a hundred dollar plus product which is why I don't have it already. It's just really pricey but it's such a good product. It's a filling mask so I I'm not overly concerned with like aging signs, but I'm trying to be preventative. So I really like this for patting on my forehead as well as certain areas on my face and my neck. And I just feel like it helps. I notice a little bit of a difference anyway. Um, it might just all be in my head, but that's fine. <laughs> it just really seemed to like give my skin a little bit of that plumping that I've noticed it seems to be missing a little bit as I'm getting older. Um, it's something that I never really notice until I look at pictures. Like if I look at a picture of my face from like five years ago and I look at it now, I'm like, wow, I notice a huge difference. Um, even though there really isn't a huge difference, I just notice a little bit in terms of like hollowness under my eyes and just like a little bit of the line stuff. My skin is just losing a little bit of its elasticity and this stuff really seems to help for that. So this is definitely going on my wish list for things that I will purchase in the future, but hopefully I'll be able to find some more samples along the way. Next, I have a shampoo and a conditioner that I would purchase. This is monumental for me because I usually like one or the other, not both. This is the Briogeo Rosarco Repair Shampoo and conditioner. So I was reading the back of it and it says that the Rose Arco is because it stands for rose hip, argan, and coconut oils. So it's supposed to be a shampoo and conditioner that combats dryness, restores shine, and it strengthens hair from root to tip. And I noticed almost immediately how much better my hair felt when I used this and that is so rare for me. Um, I got one use out of the conditioner and two uses out of the shampoo and my hair just felt so clean but it didn't feel like it was stripped of moisture which is what happens sometimes with some like repairing shampoos. Sometimes it, I feel like my hair gets really really dry and then I need a really hydrating conditioner and sometimes the repairing conditioners just aren't hydrating enough like I need a really really thick one and these both worked so well. Like I want to get them and I want to get both of them and use them together. Um, I have a few combos that I've been liking right now with shampoo and conditioners, but I'm so fussy and I like to rotate through so often just because my hair gets used to things so quickly. So I just need to keep rotating through, but I like to have things that work well for me and I tend to go through large periods of trials, but I'm really glad I tried this because the next time I need shampoo and conditioner, I am buying the Briogeo ones. I just, I'm so happy with them. They work so well. I'd heard a lot of good things about it. And a lot of you guys told me in the comments of my last update that it was a really good shampoo and conditioner. And so many people said that they like it. And yeah, it's it's totally amazing. Um, they also have a leave-in conditioning spray, which I want to try as well. Like I want to try this repair line. I've tried some other Briogeo products before and really liked it. I'd used a volumizing spray um, because of this project last year, bought the full size, loved it, and then bought the another one, repurchased it for the second time, but they changed the formula. So that was disappointing. So I, I do have a little history with Briogeo, so I definitely want to try more stuff because there just might be something out there that really works for me, like this repair line. I don't know what else is there, but there might be some other stuff. Maybe they have a mask or something. I can try that as well. So I'm very, very happy about that. And next, I have two products that I want to try again, or I want to try the correct shades. So the first thing is the foundation from Makeup Forever. This is the Water Blend Face and Body Foundation. This is a surprisingly lightweight foundation. And the shade that I had was R250, which is very, very close to my correct shade match. Very, very close. It looks misleadingly dark on the packaging. Uh, I thought it was going to be way too dark for me, but then when I actually put it on, it's a really decent match. I would say it's probably similar to like an NW15 in the MAC world. I'm an NW13, so it was very, very close. There is a shade lighter than this. I think it's R2, 
to 10. Um, and I really want to try that one because I love the way that this felt. Um, it's similar to the Water Weight Foundation from MAC and similar a little bit again to the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, but they all have those differences. Um, the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation is my perfect foundation color match wise and feeling wise. I can make it really sheer and light, um, but I can build it up to a medium coverage. It just looks so natural on my skin. It's a great foundation. I'm on my eighth bottle right now. That's how much I love it. I also really love the Water Weight Foundation because it's sheer, it's lightweight. You can't really build that one up um, like I can with that one. And it has more of like a dewy finish. This sheer lightweight foundation has more of a matte finish it was very pretty and different but it felt so lightweight on the skin and it just made my skin look so good i was just so impressed by it i've never owned a makeup forever foundation before so this might be my first one i do want to try that r210 shade first and see how it works for me before i commit though so that's why this is in sort of the try again and then the cover effects contour kit oh my goodness um i I didn't know what I was getting into here. First off, I didn't read it during my last update. I thought it was a powder thing, but it's a cream set. So I thought this shade was going to be a pretty good contour for me, but it ended up being quite a bit darker than I thought it was going to be. Don't judge a book by its cover. Um, it was a little bit too dark for me. Um, I tried blending it in and it worked decently. It's just not a good shade match for me, but the formula felt really good. And there's like a matte highlight, a shimmery highlight, and then two shades of contour. But this is the contour set for medium neutral skin tones. I definitely think the pink undertone kit might work best for me um, if I was to try this again. So that's what I want to look more into because I have been thinking about getting a cream contour kit or some sort of creamy contoury products. Uh, I don't have any of them right now and it's because I really avoided them because I just thought I was not going to be good at using them and I just don't really enjoy cream products but a lot of my preferences have changed recently or they've just sort of expanded. I'm wearing lip gloss quite frequently which I never used to do. I'm wearing bronzer every day which is something I never used to do and I've been drawn more to cream products but also for layering and I really enjoyed layering when it's made easy and I do think that if I could have some products to layer for contouring I think it would work really well for me. It's just a theory I have. I really want to stay away from like aspirational sort of makeup ideals because sometimes I get suckered into that. I watch so many people that I think are just amazingly talented at makeup and so beautiful where wear and use cream contour products and I think that's where part of it is coming from that I think like oh my god I'll look like them if I use these products and it's not going to happen. So I gotta get that out of my head and then just really focus on why do I want this what do I hope to get out of it from myself, not trying to compare myself to anyone else because that's just not going to get me anywhere. So I want to look into the pink undertone light kit and see what that's like. Maybe even look at the light neutral kit just to see what sort of comes with it and if they will all work for me. I don't like contour kits that have unusable shades, but the way that these kits are laid out is that you have things specifically targeted for your skin tone. So you do have the, the various types of highlighters and then you have two options for contour. Like with this kit it tells you that you have an option for like almost everyday contour and then something for a more dramatic effect and I like having that because there's for everyday use I definitely want to use the more natural thing but for situations like being on camera or taking photos I need something more dramatic in order to show up. So I like having more than just one thing. So that's where something like this would work potentially well for me. I do have three things that I have not finished yet. The Scentbird hand cream, the Blackberry Earl Grey tea thing is still at work. I just decided to leave it there. There's no point in bringing it back. I love it. It's the one hand cream that I truly like, but I can't even purchase it because they don't ship to Canada. So same thing goes with the Scentbird perfume. I've said before that I would have definitely subscribed to this by now. And the perfume I chose, the Black Orchid perfume from Tom Ford, I'm, I'm being very careful with it now because I really do like it and I just don't want to pay for it because it's so expensive. It's just such a 
gorgeous deep scent and it just makes me feel so good whenever I wear it so I've just been enjoying it it's my own little thing so I can just spray a little bit on and when I'm having a down day it's, it's good because I can just spray it on my wrist so if I'm at work and things aren't going so well I can just kind of smell that perfume and it brings me back up again I don't know how it works sometimes but fragrance is, an, is a magical thing so I'm still working on that but not really trying to finish it. I want to really baby it. And then the Estee Lauder eye cream. I have quite a bit of this left. I really like it. I don't think I'm going to end up purchasing the full size though. The more I use this, the more I remember the Lancome one I had used before and really ended up loving. And I should have purchased that one, but I didn't. And this one has a very similar texture. It's very balmy. So it's not a cream, it's not a gel, it's a balm. And I remember that Lancome one being a balm and just like seeping into my skin. This one has been really helping hydrate my under eyes, which I've been really dry recently and just really tired because I've been sick, I haven't been getting as much sleep. So, you know, everything's working against me, but this has really been helping. But it's just, it's sending the message to me that I need to buy the Lancome one next time I need an eye cream. So I'll be going through all of my skincare stuff, seeing what I still have, what I need to work on, and planning ahead. That's something that I'm really trying to be smart with, is planning ahead. And I need to stop with arbitrary numbers. I'm going to go... Uh, in more detail about that when I do my inventory because every year I do an inventory and I will do an, an inventory for skincare and hair care stuff if you guys would like to see that as well just let me know um I would I would gladly do it it would help me as much as it might interest you so um but I just I it, it I was always trying to just think of numbers like hmm maybe I just need like one eye cream that's all anyone needs. Well, maybe I need two. Maybe I need something for the daytime and something for the evening that would work better for me. Uh, I need to think for myself and not think about just having numbers for the sake of numbers. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent, but just something that's going to be coming up later. So anyway, that is all for my hashtag 365 days of samples for now. Like I said, it will be coming back and I will be updating you guys on the products that I have purchased this year. So I'm excited to share that with you because that's always really fun to talk about the successful things with this project. I have had so much fun doing this, so much fun. I really like the way that I did it this year. I did it every second week. So I had two weeks to work through products so it wasn't so overwhelming. And it really did seem to work well for me. Overall, with all of my projects, they all seem to have worked really well for me. So make sure to let me know if you like this project, if you like the way that I did it this past year, if you have any suggestions or ideas for things that I could change to maybe improve it, let me know as well because I love getting feedback from you guys. It really, really helps me and I hope you can see that. I really try and apply your feedback whenever possible and whenever it's applicable. I just really like to make my content better and I like to improve. So whenever you have suggestions or ideas for ways that I can improve or be better, I love to hear them. Okay, that is all for now. Thank you so, so much for watching, for spending some time with me today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead of you, and I will talk to you very, very soon. Bye for now.